In this fluid mechanics video, I'm joined by my TA Serenity, and you're going to learn about planar surfaces. This is going to be an intermediate to difficult problem as far as planar surfaces go, though of course curved surfaces are going to be much more difficult. What's going to make this problem a little bit more advanced is that one, the underwater surface is round, not rectangular. Two, that it's at an angle instead of vertical or horizontal, which would be much easier. And also that it can pivot, so we're going to have to calculate a torque at the end. But all in all, this still won't be too bad. Let's go. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. One of the hardest parts about fluid mechanics is the wide array of topics that are covered in this one semester. And so one important piece of advice that I can give you is that as you get to each new topic, don't try to treat it as a completely separate topic. Try to connect it to something previous. And if you can try to relate each of these different topics to each other, that'll make it seem a little bit easier instead of like starting over from scratch each day with something totally new. So let's start off by looking at this problem and answer what is a butterfly valve? So this part right in the middle labeled shaft is gonna be a pivot point. I've drawn these blue arrows to then show how the valve is actually gonna rotate about the center pivot point. And the reason it's gonna rotate in this clockwise direction is because pressure is gonna be larger on the lower half of the valve. So if P1 is the pressure at the top half of the valve and P2 at the bottom, P2 will obviously be larger because it's lower. And because of this, we expect the force to actually be acting a little bit below the centroid and therefore below the pivot point for the butterfly valve. So in order to solve this problem, we're gonna to need to find the magnitude of this force, which is gonna be the pressure at the centroid times area, and we're also gonna to need to find where this force is acting since it's not acting exactly at the centroid. So the real distance that we need is this Y bar CP. Y bar is the slant distance from the centroid up to the surface of the water. Y bar CP would be the slant distance down to the center of pressure, labeled on the drawing now. So then I add this delta, meaning the change. So the difference between Y bar CP and Y bar delta Y bar CP is how far below the centroid the center of pressure is located. And this problem is asking us for torque about that center. We're gonna need this distance as force times distance. Fortunately, we can figure out that torque without any angles. It's just a scalar force times distance because pressure was always gonna act perpendicular to the surface. So since pressure is perpendicular to the door and this Y bar CP is measured along the door, they will be perpendicular. So after drawing all over this drawing, I'm gonna write this down now in equation form. But if this is helping you so far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below this video to make it easier for other students like you to find this video if you think it would help others to watch it too. So again, next step into the equations. I start off this problem with the given find concept assumption solution format that I like to use for fluid mechanics. I've left assumptions blank for now. I'm gonna come back and fill those in each time I make an assumption during the solution. Sometimes in fluid mechanics problems, it's easiest to just plow your way forward with whatever you're given and just use whatever equations you have to solve for something. For this problem, I'm gonna try and be more efficient by working backwards and start with the final answer and work back to find what terms I need to get that, what terms I need to get those. And so the final answer torque is gonna to be a force times a distance. It's gonna be the force of pressure acting on the valve times the distance of where that force acts with relationship to the center of the valve. So looking at that force, the force is gonna be the force of pressure acting on the valve. So looking at the force, we're gonna be able to find that as pressure equals force over area rearranged as force equals pressure times area. And fortunately, we don't actually need to do any calculus to find the pressure distribution over the entire circular door. We just need to find the single number pressure at the centroid of the circular door. And area is just area of the circle. So how about that distance though? I said that distance is gonna be the distance from where the force acts to the hinge. And I've labeled this as delta Y CP, as in Y as in it's sort of a vertical distance, not exactly. And this CP means it's a distance from the centroid to the center of pressure. Drawing a little sketch might help explain these terms a little bit better. The centroid of the circle is just the center of the circle. But pressure acting on that hatch is not uniformly distributed. As water gets deeper, the pressure is going to increase. If you think back to your statics or mechanics and materials course, this is sort of like a trapezoidal shaped distributed load, where it is angling and getting larger as you get deeper, and then starting from a value that's not zero because even the top surface is underwater. And so if you were to find where the line of action of a trapezoidal distributed load is acting, the rectangular 
triangular part of the trapezoid would be right in the middle, but the top triangular part of the trapezoid would be shifted towards the tall side. So overall, the overall force is shifted a little bit lower, and that's why the center of pressure will be below the centroid. So to find this distance between the centroid and center of pressure, you use the moment of inertia divided by y bar a. If this were a rectangle, you might remember the moment of inertia equation 1 12th bh cubed since you used it a million times back in Mechanics of Materials. For a circle, that's not one that I usually have memorized, so I'm gonna have to look that one up. That value y bar is not the depth, it's actually the slant distance. And adding that distance to my drawing, y bar there is that slant distance along the same angle as the door up to the surface of the water. So it's gonna be larger than the depth. So looking at what we have written here now, we should be able to find all of these pieces. So let's start attacking each one and plug in some numbers and get to the final answer. So I made a checklist of the four things we need to find. Pressure at the centroid, area of the circle, Y bar being the slant distance, and I the moment of inertia. So easiest one first, area of a circle, pi d squared over four, we get that value about 28. And always a good idea to include units to make sure that everything cancels out and your final answer is in the units you actually want. To find moment of inertia, if you don't remember the equation for a circle, you're gonna need to find a table. In my book, this is in the appendices. In your book, it could be in the front or back cover or It'll be somewhere. So for a circle, I'm using this equation, pi r to the fourth over four. And plugging in numbers, we get about 63 feet to the fourth. For pressure, this may help to think back to the manometer problems that you probably learned about earlier in this chapter. And remember that pressure at depth was rho g h, density times gravity times height, or you could do gamma times h, specific weight times height. You may already have the specific weight of water memorized, in which case just plug the number in, but if you're just starting your fluid mechanics course, you might not have it memorized yet. So in that case, flip back to the appendices and look for the water table where you can find things like viscosity and specific weight. And you'll see that it actually changes depending on temperature. I mentioned at the beginning that I left my assumptions blank and here's a perfect example where I'm gonna have to make an assumption of what the temperature is for this problem. I'm gonna arbitrarily assume 50 degrees so that I can use that 62.4 number, which is a really common number to use. Again, I'm being careful with my units. It looks like everything's gonna work out fine in this problem, but a lot of problems it won't. For example, PSI is a really common unit, pounds per square inch and this time we're in feet. So again, just be careful, write out your units. So I've drawn another picture here to show how to find Y bar at the depth of 60 feet with the angle of 30 degrees from vertical. And so since it's a really common mistake to mix up whether you need to divide or multiply by cosine 30, I'm gonna start off by just using Sokotoa. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse and then rearrange this to make it more clear how to get Y equals, whether it should be multiplied or divided. And you get an answer of about 69.2 feet. Of course, I already made a big deal about this slant diagonal distance should be larger than the 60 foot depth. So that alone should have given it away that it must be 60 divided by cosine 30, not multiplied by. Because if we multiplied, we wouldn't have ended up with a smaller number. But this is at least one way to check and make sure that it makes sense. If you got an answer of like 50 feet, then you would know that that's impossible based on the picture that you drew. So that's another reminder, always draw a picture. Draw lots of pictures, it will help. So plugging in the pressure and area, force comes out to be 105,000 pounds. And plugging in numbers to find the distance between the centroid and center of pressure, we get about 0 0.03 feet. And so the torque on this valve ends up being 3438 foot pounds. If this video has helped you understand how to take a complicated problem and break it down into smaller pieces, consider subscribing to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. If you wanna watch another video right now, you probably have some recommendations up on the screen. Feel free to click whichever one you want. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.